Hello students. Welcome to IT TV. How are you today? I hope you're in good health. Today we're going to learn the uses and roles of microorganisms. Let's look at this simple situation. What happens when plants and animals die? They actually go through decomposition process whereby there will be bacteria and fungi that actually decomposes them. So we do need some of these bacteria and fungi's help for this process to occur. So let's learn more about these microorganisms. What are the uses to us and also in different fields starting from the roles of microorganisms. Microorganisms play an important role in food digestion, medicine, agriculture, food industry, textile industry and as a cleaning agent. So here we can see the uses and roles of microorganisms in different sectors. Let's start from food digestion. Roles of microorganisms in food digestion. Roles of microorganisms in food digestion can be explained in two different forms. They are in herbivores and in humans. Let's look at the roles of microorganisms in herbivores. Herbivores. Herbivores depend on bacteria that live in their stomach to digest cellulose. The bacteria secretes cellulase into the stomach. Cellulase breaks down cellulose into glucose, a simple sugar that can be used by herbivores. So in here, you have to understand the difference of cellulase and cellulose. Now in a herbivore, naturally they eat plants. Now these plants consist of cellulose. Now what happens is this cellulose is a long chain. They can't afford to break it. We need an enzyme that actually to break this cellulose. So the enzyme that is active in here that is produced by this bacteria that is present in the stomach is actually called cellulase. Now this cellulase is breaks down the cellulose to become glucose. Now glucose is a simple sugar. Now this is the role of bacteria in herbivore. Let's look the roles of bacteria and microorganisms in human. Humans. There are many microorganisms living in the large intestine of human being such as bacteria. The bacteria secretes enzyme in the large intestine. The enzyme breaks down the undigested food and produces vitamin K. In humans, microorganisms are practically everywhere and we are actually focusing on large intestine. Now in large intestine what happens in here is there is this special microorganisms where it produces and breaks down food. It produces vitamin K there which is absorbed gradually. So these are the importance in food digestion. Let's see other than food digestion is there any benefit of these microorganisms. The use of microorganisms in medicine have saved human lives. Diseases that were once considered fatal can now be easily cured. Roles of microorganisms in medicine can be explained in three different examples. They are antibiotic, insulin and vaccine. So let's see the role of microorganism in antibiotic. Antibiotics. Antibiotics are chemical substances produced by bacteria and fungi. Antibiotics are used to kill or inhibit the growth of harmful microorganisms. However, antibiotic cannot be used to kill viruses. An example of antibiotic is penicillin. Penicillin is produced by the fungi called penicillin mutatum. 
So here we have seen what is the benefits of antibiotic. Now normally when we see a doctor we will be prescribed with antibiotics when we have a high fever and a flu and so on. This is to fight back the disease that is in our body. Now antibiotics is actually produced by two that is bacteria and fungi. Now they are useful to kill certain things in the body but unfortunately they can't kill virus and we have seen here in an example penicillin it is a common antibiotic used by many practitioner now let's see besides antibiotic move on moving on to insulin humans are able to produce insulin to regulate the amount of glucose in their blood However, when the body is unable to produce insulin, this will lead to diabetes. In such cases, a person is given an injection of insulin. Insulin is produced from certain microorganisms. Nowadays, genetic engineering enables insulin to be produced using bacteria. Diabetes, it's a common disease that we hear in nowadays even children get it now let's look what is a common problem in here diabetes happens when there is an increase of sugar level in our body and it happens because there is less insulin to change this glucose solution to become simple sugar so now what creates this we need to have this insulin in our body so therefore we have certain microorganisms that aids and helps us to produce insulin. So how to overcome diabetes? One is to increase the insulin in our body and one way is to inject this insulin into our body. Now we have seen two things so far, antibiotics and insulin. Let's move on to the last one on medicine. Vaccine. A vaccine is made of weakened or killed microorganisms. This weakened microorganism cannot cause diseases. When a vaccine is injected into our body, our body creates antibodies. A vaccine is made of weakened microorganisms. Actually, one type of microorganisms that can cause disease now the reason why is injected into the body is to create antibodies to fight back. So when the real disease occur, we are actually prepared for it. There are few examples of these vaccines in our daily lives. You will learn later in the other lessons. But let's look at how vaccine actually works. When the body creates antibody, it will be distributed throughout the body. These antibodies will fight off any foreign microorganisms. Vaccines protect us against deadly diseases such as measles and mumps. Polio vaccine is an example of a vaccine produced from killed or weakened polio viruses. Here we have seen some of the examples of usage of vaccine in order to prevent measles, mumps and polio. So we have seen the benefits of microorganism in medicine. Let's move on to the other sector. Agriculture. Let's look at the roles of microorganism in agriculture. Microorganisms are helpful in agriculture. Microorganisms are used to fight pests, diseases and weeds that can result in damage of crops. Microorganisms enable nutrients to be more easily absorbed by plants. Roles of microorganisms in agriculture can be explained in three different examples. They are biopesticides, nitrogen cycle and humus. Now let's look at the role of biopesticide. Biopesticide Biopesticides is a form of pest control that uses living things. Example, a bacteria is used to stop reproduction of beetles. Instead of using chemical compounds, biopesticide is actually safe environmentally. So it is encouraged 
for farmers to use biopesticides in their agriculture. Now let's move on to nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen cycle. Plants like soya bean and peas have lumps on their roots called nodules. Nodules is a swelling of roots of plants legumes due to the presence of nitrogen fixing microorganisms. A type of bacteria called rhizobium is found in these lumps. Rhizobium acts as a nitrogen fixing bacteria. Rhizobium converts the atmospheric nitrogen gas into ammonium nitrate. Nitrates are then used by the plant to grow. Here we can see the benefit of rhizobium bacteria where it absorbs the nitrogen that is available in the atmosphere, converts it to become a nitrate ion. Now this nitrate ion is actually absorbed by the plant whereby it helps to grow the plant. So the benefit of bacteria, this rhizobium bacteria that we are talking in here is seen in this nitrogen cycle. Now we have seen two so far biopesticides and nitrogen cycle. Let's look at humus. Humus is used to fertilize the soil. It consists of decomposed organic materials such as dead animals and leaves. The microorganisms in the soil act as a decomposers. The microorganisms break down the organic materials into a black material. Humus helps to retain water and this improves the texture of the soil. So here we have seen how microorganisms contribute to humus. So let's look at the next role that is food industry. Roles of microorganisms in food industry. Cheese, yogurt, soya sauce, alcoholic beverages and bread are made using microorganisms. Let's look at some of these examples to have a better understanding. Cheese. Cheese is made of milk. Milk contains lactose and casein. When bacteria are added to milk, they break down to lactose and casein. When this happens, liquid becomes curd. The taste and texture of cheese depends on the type of microorganisms used. So here we have seen how cheese is formed from microorganisms. Let's look at the production of soya sauce. Soya sauce is brownish liquid used to season food. Soya sauce is made from a mixture of soya bean and wheat. This mixture is boiled until soft. Various bacteria and fungi are added to allow for fermentation to occur. The fermented mixture is soya sauce. So soya sauce is actually originated from soya bean and wheat and it goes through a process, fermentation process involving a bacteria. So that's how we get this soya sauce whereby it actually acts as a seasoning. Let's look at alcoholic beverages. Alcohol beverage, beer making. In beer making, a type of yeast is added to malted barley. The zeemase enzyme produced by the yeast acts on the sugar in the malted barley. Acid reacts, it converts the sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Now it is a simple process. In beer making, malted barley is used. Now malted barley is a form of glucose. It actually comes, uh, all this happens in a fermentation process where yeast is added and this yeast produces a special enzyme called zeemase where it breaks down this glucose to produce alcohol. Now this alcohol is where it retains in this beer and this is how beer is made. Now beer is totally different than wine. Now wine uses grape and in beer it uses, they are actually using barley. So let's see in wine making. Wine making. In wine making, grape juice is used. Another type of yeast is added to grape juice. The zeemase enzyme produced by the yeast acts on the sugar in the grape juice. As it reacts, it converts the sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. 
So same thing occurs in wine making where glucose is involved, yeast which produces Zimase enzyme breaks down this glucose to produce alcohol and carbon dioxide. Now this similar thing actually is applied even in bread making but in bread making we do not need that alcohol we actually use up the production of carbon dioxide to make the bread more double the size and more fluffy let's look at the next slide to understand the making of bread bread a type of yeast is used to make the dough rice when the yeast feeds on the sugar in the dough carbon dioxide and alcohol are released glucose sugar turns to become ethanol that is in alcohol and carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide fills the dough and make it expand the alcohol evaporates during baking the bread is often more than twice the size of its dough roles of microorganism in textile industry leather is a processed skin of animals some examples of these animals are cows and horses skin contains protein and fats in between collagen fibers bacteria are used to break down these proteins and fats that are later removed so in textile industry microorganisms play an important role let's look at cleaning agent cleaning agent for detergent detergent are a type of cleaning agent some detergents contain the enzyme of certain bacteria the enzymes in the detergent help to remove protein based stain like food and blood so some of the detergents in here actually has bacteria so this is where the roles of microorganisms comes in in cleansing agent as a cleansing agent now let's look at another potential use of microorganisms especially when disasters occur like oil spill so let's look some of the examples in here potential uses of microorganisms can be seen in oil spill cleanup sewage treatment gene therapy and bioplastic technology let's start from oil spill cleanup Potential uses of microorganisms in oil spill cleanup. Pseudomonas bacteria are used to clean oil spills. The bacteria breaks down complex compound into simpler components to obtain energy and nutrient. So bacteria are used in the oil spill up. Now oil spill actually creates a lot of disadvantage to our aquatic animals. One of them is it actually discourages the air from dissolving into the water whereby there's no oxygen supply. That's just one. On top of that, birds will be having oil on their feathers and it goes on. But thank you to this bacteria, thanks to this bacteria, it actually breaks down this oil and is actually a nutrient for the bacteria itself. So this is the advantage of using bacteria in oil spill. Potential uses of microorganisms in sewage treatment. Sewage contains wastewater, human waste, microorganisms and some chemicals. Decomposing microorganisms are used to remove dissolved organic matters in the wastewater. So here we can see the microorganisms also play a role in our sewage treatment where this decomposing microorganism is used in the treatment that is one advantage in here now let's look at gene therapy potential use of microorganisms in gene therapy scientists have discovered a new procedure to treat genetic disorder an example of genetic disorder is sickle cell anemia to treat this, gene therapy uses viruses to correct the defective genes. So gene therapy is important whereby we can fix certain things and virus actually helps in the gene therapy. Now let's look at plastic. The main source of material to produce plastic is hydrocarbon. 
Thus, they create environmental problems such as producing toxic gases when burned. To solve this, biodegradable plastic are used. Bioplastic technology. The bacteria use the sugar of the harvested plant, such as corn, for their cellular processes. The byproduct of these cellular processes is the polymer. Polymer are separated from the bacterial cell. These polymer are used to produce plastic. When living organisms are used to produce plastic, the product is called bioplastic. So plastic is actually creates a disadvantage to our environment whereby it creates a hazardous gas to our atmosphere. So bioplastic is used and we have seen how it is actually created whereby bacteria is used and it actually creates the cellulose through this supply of corn. So this is how bioplastic gradually is produced and one good thing about this is biodegradable whereby it actually decomposes. Now let's look at some of the questions. Question 1. Microorganisms are used to produce insulin commercially to treat diabetic patients. Insulin is extracted from A. Virus B. Algae C. Bacteria D. Protozoa Now, insulin is actually created by one in particular, it's actually bacteria. So therefore, if you look back into your notes, the answer is bacteria. So the answer for this question is C. Let's look at question two. Dead organisms that goes through process X will be converted to become ammonia compounds through nitrifying bacteria produces nitrates and nitrates. The diagram shows the decomposition of dead organisms. What is X? A. Saprophytic bacteria and fungi B. Nitrogen fixation bacteria C. Cellulase D. Nutrient Decomposition actually occurs where dead organisms actually will be converted to become uh, ammonia compounds. Now the X in here is actually is A. Saprophytic bacteria and fungi. Now bacteria and fungi are examples of decomposers. So that's why the answer for this question is an example of bacteria and fungi. The answer is A. Question 3. Plants like soya bean and peas have lumps on their roots called nodules. Bacteria X converts the nitrogen gas into ammonia. What is the name of the bacteria? A. Rhizobium B. Penicillium C. Bacillus D. Pseudomonas Now, coming back into this question, there is a bacteria we have learned in the nitrogen cycle whereby it's present in the nodules. But what is the name of the bacteria? It starts from R actually. Yes, it's rhizobium. So the answer for this question is very straightforward. The answer is A, rhizobium. Number four, cellulose found in the plants can be digested by herbivores because of the presence of certain bacteria which secretes A. Amylase B. Lipase C. Cellulase D. Protease Cellulose is present in the plant and as we know cellulose which is consumed by the herbivores will be in the stomach itself. Now we need a bacteria. This bacteria actually secretes this enzyme 
whereby it changes to a simple, simple sugar like glucose. So what happens in here? What is is created? Is actually the answer is C, cellulase. That is the answer for this question. Now let's summarize what we have learned. We have learned the different roles of microorganisms in different segments like examples are like food industry, medicine, textile industry and so on. And on top of that we also have seen the roles of microorganisms in oil spills as a biodegradable plastic, in gene therapy and sewage treatment. So these are the things the uses and roles of microorganisms. So I hope you have learned a lot from today's lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV. I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye students and have a great day ahead.